Test, test. Test, test. All right, well, thank you, um, everyone, for being here this morning. So, Ms. Smith, if you want to head on up to the podium. Uh, this is Judiciary Non-Civil, and we have a few members who I think are stuck in traffic or are coming in a little bit uh, later today or later this morning. And so um, we'll take action once we have a quorum so that uh, we can go and move on legislation. But I want to thank the committee members who are here this morning so we can get started on time. I know we have a busy day ahead. So uh, the first bill up that uh, we previously heard, we had a hearing only before session resumed Monday, but it was Senate bill, Senator Albers bill, which is Senate bill 394. And uh, this is as passed in the Senate, there's no substitute for it. So at this point in time, um, we'll call forward uh, Mr. Smith with the Attorney General's office and um, just uh, ask Mr. Smith, could you just give us a refresher on what Senate Bill 394 is, and um, and then we'll see if any members of the committee have any questions. Let me turn your mic on. All right, yes, sir. Thank you. Well, th thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Um, Senate Bill 394, um, as you know previously, um, this bill is seeking to um, clarify and grant our um, investigators in our um, Human Trafficking Unit and Medicaid Fraud, specifically specialized crimes that um, the state focuses on the authority to employ peace officers. Um, and we've worked obviously with members of the committee and thanks to the Monora Leader Trammell on um, the substitute version for narrowing that subsection down. Um, and this is just a bill um, to support the great work that um, our investigators in our unit currently do. And obviously wanna thank the governor and the first lady for their commitment on this issue of human trafficking. Um, and that's pretty much the gist of the bill, just a pretty pretty simple um, cleanup measure that is necessary for the good work of our just, unit. Just so I'm clear though, the, um, 
there was a substitute in the Senate. In other words, this committee is just considering Senate Bill 394, which passed out of the Senate. Is that correct? Correct, which passed out of the Senate. And yes, I believe you have the substitute version in front of you. Okay. Well, I will give you a copy of this so you can take a look at it. Okay. And uh, you can let us know if there's any um, – yeah, thanks. If there's any – if this, if we're looking off the same copy. Yes, sir. All right, so um, so very good. So there, uh, there is no committee substitute for Senate Bill 394 here. We're just considering the bill is passed in the state Senate. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Smith. I don't see any questions. Okay. Um, members of the committee, at this point in time, um, I'll entertain a motion. All right. Representative Momptahan makes a motion to pass Senate Bill 394. Is there a second? There's a motion and second. Uh, any discussion? Any proposed amendments, further questions? All right, seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? No. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a hand vote. Um, and so all those um, in favor signify by raising your hand. Representative Bodie, are you a yes or a no? You're a no? Okay. All right. All those in favor signify by raising their hand. One, two. Okay. All opposed. Of oh, three, Representative Dickerson. All right. All those opposed. One, two, three. And chair votes aye. So it'll be four to three on that bill. That bill passes on to rules. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Smith. All right, next uh, we will call for the next bill on our agenda, Senate Bill 337. Senator Thompson, if you want to come to the podium. And if uh, you'd like, sir, you can go ahead and present your bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Uh, good morning. I bring before you Senate Bill 337. I'm going to be brief. It's a simply what happened was in 2014, Representative or Chairman Tanner um, introduced successfully some legislation and it passed unanimously. Uh, if you look back, or many of you may remember, that legislation was HB 838. It was called revenge porn. And basically what it did was it said that it, was gonna, it would be illegal for you to transmit a photo, a video, a still image of someone without their consent. Um, what we've had with latest involvement in our uh, society is the creation through technology of people's images. And so all this does is open up that and it includes deep fake. So you cannot create the image of someone and do the exact same thing. That's all this does. We've got the Prosecutors Association out here that if there's any questions, uh, they're welcome to testify, but it moves pretty quickly through our Senate. All right, see uh, you have a few questions. Representative Reeves. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's not a, uh, not a question, but more of a, a statement. I, I have recently <coughs> read some, some materials online about deep fakes and, and really what's to come, that that probably is a lot of what the future holds and um, yes, sir. how serious. It's, it's, it's probably one of the most terrifying things that I've ever imagined in my entire life, and I think that it is going to become part of our society that's going to infiltrate uh, everything from uh, political leaders to, to celebrities to your, your common I anybody. And I think getting on the front end of this um, and establishing our laws that our laws cover that ac activity is, is extremely important and very proactive because I do believe that over the next 10 years it's going to be a huge deal. Yes, sir. If I may respond to that, Mr. Chairman. Yes, go ahead. So many states are addressing right now. Um, some people are offering comprehensive. Texas has gone after elections and political figures. We wanted to keep this narrow in focus first through our state, a conservative state. 
and in an election year to stay away from that so it could not become politi uh, politicized. So thank you for your words on this, sir. <clears throat> Representative Dickerson. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, would the punishment be the same for both crimes? Uh, yeah, all it's doing is opening up the existing law right now and adding this into it, yes. Okay, so this is basically something like photoshopping, but it's videographic um, images of people. Yes, ma'am. Right now, with and I'm sure you're aware of this, so forgive me for, um, or just indulge me for a second, but deep fake is simply going in with technology and creating the image of someone. So you, you see this a couple of years ago when President Obama was in office, um, I think it was Romney, Peep did a deep fake image of him and they put it out there of him speaking and then you found out real quick that wasn't him. So now this is being, to use that kind of technology in the past you had to be pretty sophisticated. Now most computers you can go in and create that. So what we're trying to do on the front end, as um, Chairman Reef said, is when someone was to create an image, a pornographic image of you, person, that's now included in this because before the current uh, law states that it's a photo or a video of you, we want to include if someone creates an image of you to be included in that. Okay, because um, <coughs> I was photoshopped on some pornographic sites when I had a bill, and I really thought they looked good of me, you know, I mean. <laughs> There's a song that says, I can't touch this. So. <laughs> Sorry. So, <laughs> Sorry. I mean, it was, a different view, it was a different view of myself, you know, so uh, I'm just saying. I just wanted to just get some clarification with the punishment. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> <clears throat> Representative Montahan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm still recovering. Um, <laughs> wanted to just get some clarification, lines 25 and 26, just trying to understand the liability. It looks like we've, uh, honestly, I have, no understanding of, of the interactive computer service. Can you just give some clarity here? I'd love to. I'm going to ask the prosecutor associate to come in because this was an amendment they asked that okay. needed to be put in. So, um, yeah, if you'd like to step out and grab them, please. Mr. Smith, if you'd like to come forward and help us with a question, that'd be great. It's the line 25. Okay. Thanks. Um. I think that the, one of the concerns was the ability to and to protect the unknowing internet service provider. The, basically, they don't always, people who host these things or have these websites hosted don't always know or are aware of the content that's getting published. And this is to basically to provide a protection for someone who's running a, say, a website that's something very innocuous, like you know, a discussion about Georgia politics, and all of a sudden some nefarious person posting up inappropriate images. The person who's hosting the website discussing the politics doesn't know these images are being posted. They're not going to be. This, this prevents them from being held liable for those for those actions of a third party who's got ill intent. Mr. Chairman, if I may follow, yeah, please. Uh, I just want to make sure that this may cover something like a Facebook or social media. I think that's that would be. Does that cover them? Facebook would be protected in this instance because they would because they don't have awareness of every image that's being or every post that's being put up there. I see. Okay. At least that is the intent of the image, the, the, the intent of the amendment as I read it. Thank you. Okay. All right. Any further questions, Mr. Smith? Anything? I know you were out of the room following our protocols, and I appreciate that. But uh, any additional? insider input that you wish to give about the need for this legislation there's there is a problem with this there are you know, we've been this this body has taken steps each to each year for the past couple of years making different aspects of this act criminal um, we've done revenge porn we've done um, other issues and this just is another step down this path um, as, and it would be a tool that we could use all right thank you I don't see any other questions, so thank you very much. Thank you. All right.
At this point in time, Senate Bill 337 is passed in the Senate is before the committee. Is there a motion? There's a motion to pass by Vice Chairman Reeves. Is there a second? Second by Representative Momptahan. All right, any discussion or proposed amendments? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, it's unanimous. Passes on to rules. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Senator. Chairman. Thank you, members of the committee. All right, members of the committee, just for planning purposes, we're trying to space out our bills so that we don't get overwhelmed with the number of bills coming through, but we do have several measures that we still need to consider uh, before things, uh, before we get too far into the resumption of session here. So I'm calling another meeting tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. I expect we'll have two bills on the calendar then, and uh, we'll give you some, as best as possible, give you some scheduling uh, predictions so that we can kind of plan going forward, uh, moving other legislation that we might have. Certainly, if there are any bills that uh, you're aware of or uh, you've been contacted by a senator to consider, please uh, come see me offline. Representative Dickerson. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. We will have those bills today. Yes, the, um, there's no substitutes for the two bills, and my office should have the notice put up today. Um, I see Ms. Salim nodding. We can get the notice out today so that you'll have those bills to review. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. All right, we're adjourned. Thank you.